Every time I have a birthday, I get younger. I go back. Well, I asked about birthdays, and somebody asked me here, I, my birthday was the 15th of August. I said, uh, how old are you? I said, 47. He looked at me and said, you know that? I said, yeah. He said, the four converts to 47. <laughs> when you're dyslexic, yeah. See? Every time you have a birthday, you get younger. <laughs> when you're 88, you're in trouble. <laughs> Just I don't have an answer for that one. <laughs> that one got me. All right. So I've got a hymn book. Please turn with me to check page 500. 88. All right. Not like 99. <laughs> Page 500. Okay. We're going to be talking about a little bit about trust and faith and laying here in the message. I'm trying to figure out my couple songs to get us started. Trust and obey, page 500. Everybody ready? When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory sheds on our way. Let us do His good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil we doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a crown or a cross, but it's blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delight of His love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor He shows and the joy He bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at His feet, or go on by His side in the way. What He says we will do. Where he stands we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen, awesome. Here you got an awesome voice, bro. Page 154. 154. You know, these songs that we sing were written by Christian authors, and every one of them that I have found so far that's in the Bible, in this book, in the songbooks, are based on Scripture. Trust and obey. We trust and obey God. 
Things are great for our lives. And this is what a friend we have in Jesus. Page 154. What a friend. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, okay. What a friend. I'm getting, I'm getting on the wrong too. For some reason, I can't get this tuned in my head. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's turn to page... 607. This is one I was going to sing as a special, but I think maybe this is the time for it right now. And I didn't realize that I brought a songbook with me that I do have these songs in it. But this is a. Can we go back to 154? Sure. Because I timed it this morning. I have to bring it. Okay. It goes. Go back to 154. You got it. Now I've got that. 154. And then we'll go back to the other one. How's that sound? Awesome. Your show, bro. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to bear. What a Oh. 
But we find that if we, in the third chapter of Daniel, we find that Nebuchadnezzar built a golden statue. Now, I don't know how much gold it took to make this statue, <laughs> but to give you an idea how big this statue was, the scripture tells us it was three scores tall and six cubits wide. Six score, okay, 90 feet. Now, can you imagine that? That's probably taller than this building by a bit. Let's see, what, there are three or four stories in this building? Three. Three. So, this building is roughly 30 feet tall. Because you figure with the ceilings, see, I'm in the construction business too. You figure each floor is taking up about 10 feet. Yep. So if you've got 10 feet in the roof, maybe 40. Okay? Yep. But think about this. He built a statue to honor himself twice the height of this building. A little. In gold. And nine feet wide. And he set it out the, the terrain around the Babylonian city was kind of flat. And off to the just outside the city, there was a, a little, what I call a knoll. I'm an old country boy. <laughs> where a knoll is a place where it comes up and flattens out. And then, and then you go back down, it's the high point. Out on the flat plain, the high point there, just outside the city, is where he had the statue built. So that no matter where you came from, coming to the city, you saw this big, humongous, golden, now, gold, solid gold. Now, what that would be worth in billions or millions of dollars today, I don't know. Probably trillions. But think about it. <laughs> uh, we wouldn't have to be working or worrying about expenses or anything if we had that. That's for sure. But also, not only did he do that, the people that, of the Babylonian nation told him he needed to make a decree. Then a law that whenever a trumpet sounded, a flute sounded, a guitar played, or anything, a harp, whenever they heard music, they were to immediately fall down and worship that idol. Uh oh, somebody just said, and that's true. When the first time, and, and the Babylonian people that kind of helped connive this were like spies, always keeping their eyes on Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, in this particular chapter, we don't know where Daniel's at. He suspected that he was on some kind of a trip to do work for the king, but he wasn't there at this time, or he'd have been on, in the group too. Well, he could have been praying. <laughs> he, according to all historians, theologians, and everything, they feel that Daniel was out of the city. Okay. The music started playing. Everybody got down. The spies are watching. And what did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do? They went on up their daily business. They didn't bow down to the idol. They didn't worship the idol. Instantly, These spies ran to the king and said, You know that decree you put out? Yeah. Well, did you realize that the three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, didn't bow down and worship your you, the idol that you built for you? He became infuriated. He called, sent his men, soldiers, go 
get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Bring them to me. Come on in and join us. You're going to. <laughs> and they come up. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, don't you know the decree about worshiping the idol? Yes, sir. Did it? They wouldn't have to know about it. They said, yeah, we know. And you realize that it's been decreed that anybody that didn't have bow down and worship that idol would be thrown in the fiery furnace? Yes, sir. We knew that. And then they said, King, our God will protect us. If he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down and worship your God, your idol. No matter what you threaten us with, we've got an almighty God that we worship and that's all we're going to worship and no matter what you claim, what you try to convince us with or what you threaten us with, we will not bow down to that idol. Oh, that really put fire in the king. He said, go heat the fiery furnace seven times yep. hotter yep. than it's ever been heated before. Now, how many of you have ever been around a campfire or a fireplace and you, you back up to it, you warm up one side, and then you turn around and you warm up the other side if you're outside and it's cold? That's usually when you build a campfire. And you don't want to get real close because I have got close enough to tell my <laughs> pants was getting singed. It could have been. But they heated this furnace seven times harder than they've ever heated it before. And he had the soldiers bind them their hands, their feet. They were fully clothed. And when they got close to the entrance to this fiery furnace, the soldiers that had been instructed, and they knew better than to not follow the orders, to throw these three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, died from the heat. Well, I guess when they're dying, they must have bumped, or the Lord did it. It just says that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell into the yep. fire furnace. Well, they're gone, right? <laughs> Dissolved, disappeared, burned up, no longer in history. Wrong. It says the king walked over and looked into the entrance to the fiery furnace and he asked the question, didn't we throw three in there? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, how come I see four? Do what? <laughs> we only threw three in there, but the king says there's four in there. There were. And the fourth looks to be the Son of God. Amen. They brought Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They came walking out of fire furnace. Yes. Here's a furnace being heated seven times hotter than it's ever been heated before. <laughs> the soldiers throwing them in, throwing them in there, died in the heat. But here comes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego just walking around the fire furnace just like nothing was going on. Now, how many of you have ever been around the fire and didn't get the smell of smoke in your clothes? Or maybe send some hair <clears throat> on your arm? None of us. Because if you get too close, that's going to happen. 
So here, think about this. Here comes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walking out of the fiery furnace just as unconcerned and nonchalant as could be. Now, Gary's paraphrasing a little bit of this. <laughs> But that's the way I envision it. Because God's hand was in it. Yeah. They walked out of there. Did not have one hair, head, arms, anywhere since. No s- smell of smoke in their clothing. And none of their clothing was singed or hurt. Why did this happen? Because three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, trust and obey God. Amen. That's what their life was about. Yes. And they had a friend in Jesus because he was in there with them. Yes. The protection of God and the hope and Jesus Christ all was around them where there was no way in this world that anything was going to happen to three, those three young men. Because God said in one of the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, yeah. and to make no graven image <coughs> to worship. And they did it. Even though they were in bondage, even though they could have lost their lives, their statement, remember what they said to the king? Our God may not protect us. But even if he doesn't, we're still not going to bow down to your God. Right. Because we believe, we serve, and worship the only eternal, supreme God. And even if he doesn't protect us, and we lose our lives, we're going to be in a far greater place. Remember that song we just sang, What a Day That Will Be? Amen. That was their thought. That no matter what happened or what the king tried to impose upon them, they weren't going to do it because there was only one they were going to worship and serve. And that was the Almighty God. And they didn't, they didn't change. Even with the threat of losing their lives. They didn't change. And our world is coming to the point today that that may happen to us. And as sad as I hate to say it, it's true. The people that stand up and live for Jesus and live for God, their lives could be on the line. Because it tells us about that in the scripture. But just think about it. Because of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's trust and faith in God, they have They were protected. Walked out of there. And we're talking just like you and I are sitting here today. Think about that. The miraculous, marvelous protection God provides for his people. Or not. No matter what it is, he protects us. <coughs> I want to close my part with a song that is a song that my mother used to sing when I was a young boy. That's been a few years ago. (laughs) And even a little boy. I didn't used to be as big as I was until I got about 12. (laughs) <laughs> and I got me. But this song talks about some of the things, same things we've been talking about. And if you know this song and you want to sing it along with me, it's called 
He touched me. Shackled by a heavy burden. Six twenty-eight. Be the Lord of guilt and shame. I thought Baptists had to have food in the song. Had to have food in the song for the anthem. 
<laughs> Sorry. But this, but since I've been, well, lived before like this, I've heard this song, I've sang this song, and it's one of those that it never grows old and has a great, wonderful meaning. Yeah. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that caused my
Everybody going to go out partying and playing and everything tomorrow? <laughs> oh, yeah, right. 5,000 hamburgers on the beach. Everybody's going, right? <laughs> zoo. I'm going to the zoo. Going to the zoo. Visiting family. They're going to... <laughs> you said... <laughs> Did you hear that? I'm taking the family with me. <laughs> take it family with me. It's a joke. But. Uh, uh, We're going to take it to heart. I might leave my daughter there, though, if she's uh, not lucky. All right. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Bob? Amen. Thank you, everyone, for coming. See you next week. Um, guys, just one last thing before everybody leaves. I am setting up a, uh, a like a site um, for Harmony um, so that we'll have um, eventually once I get it done, we'll have the ability to do live, um, the broadcast live, um, as like when Gary's doing it, and you'll be able to chat. So like if you happen to be sick that day and you're in your room, but you still want to participate, um, each of us will be, you'll have a site that you can go to on your phone, and, and those that are in here, if you want to chat with people, maybe it's your friend that she's sick or he's sick, and he normally comes with you and sits at the table with you, they'll have an app, they'll be able to sit at the table with you from their room. Um, so I think for here, that's a great opportunity for us to involve people that maybe don't normally have the ability to come down here, um, uh, or just you're sick that day, right? And you want to be here, but you, you can't for whatever reason. Um, so I'm getting that set up. Should be probably in the next couple of weeks. It's already mostly set up, um, so I just got to test some things and get the live part done. Two more things. Bible study next Wednesday, yep. 10 o'clock, right and down the hall, so the room opposite the dining room. And remember what I said before. He's here, I'm here, and I live here, you know. Anybody needs help trying to find their way to Jesus Christ as their Savior, we're, we're here to help you. Yeah. You've got you to take a step forward and come to us. That's part of the deal. Thank you and have a great day. And Henry's already got his uh, last uh, lesson is up on YouTube right now. So um, if you want to that come ask me and I'll give you the address for it and all that plus all the other uh, all the other services are already up on YouTube as well all right that's it God bless everybody thank you I'm scheduled for October a date in October I came down to do it I didn't come when they asked me to go Amen. Bye, thank you. Thank you so much.